Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create dependent drop-down options in Google Sheets. So here I've got a list of categories, products, and brands. And so the idea being, you're gonna select from a category, then based on that category, you're gonna select a different set of products, and then within that product category, you're gonna have different brands to narrow in on. So the idea is you don't have a huge list of items to, to go through. Your, your drop-down selections are gonna be based on earlier selections, so it'll narrow them down. And so with Google Sheets, it's actually not too hard to set this up, and I'm gonna show you how we can do this. So for starters, you wanna create a, a list of your initial drop-down options. So we wanna have our starting category uh, drop-down set up. So I've got electronics, I've got apparel, and I've got groceries. So what I wanna do here is create a list. So I'm gonna use the unique function to say, okay, look at, let's say A1 to A1000, just cause I just wanna go as far as I'm gonna need it to and not worry about the range. So I've got my list there uh, for my starting list. So I'm gonna highlight this entire column and call it selection one. And so that's my named range that I've created. So I'm gonna leave some space here and over here, I'm gonna insert a drop-down option and there's an option to select a drop-down from a range. This is where I'm gonna type equals selection one. So as you can see, it's, it's populated my options there, but th these would change if, if this list changes. So they're not, not locked in there. So that's good. And now if I make my selection, you can see I've got, works as a regular, regular drop-down but right now that's all it is just a regular drop down I want to create a dependent drop down to say okay if I select electronics I just want to see the products that belong to the electronics category so with Google Sheets there is a function we can use called filter and how it works is we specify the range that we want to extract the values from and then we create conditions so in this example the range I want to put, pull from is column B the product category and my condition is in column A to say, okay, if the values in column A equal this selection. So if they're equal to electronics, then I wanna pull the value from product B, from column B. Now the problem here is I've got duplicate, uh, duplicate values. So I'm gonna use the unique function to enclose this. And now I've just got a unique list of the items from the electronics category. So now I'm gonna create another named range and I'm gonna call this selection two. Now, the really cool thing about Google Sheets is even though I've selected all of column F, it's gonna ignore these blank values. It knows just to include the values that are filled in. So now, if I go to insert another dropdown and let's select dropdown from a range I'm gonna say equals selection two. So that name range is just created. Hit done. And see, I don't have any extra blanks. So if you did this in Excel, you'd ha have to worry about getting rid of those, those blank values. But in Google Sheets, it's intuitive enough. It, it knows where to, where to stop. So it's just populating the values that are filled in. So now if I selected, let's say apparel, you know, that list updates and so does this one. If I select groceries, that updates. So does this one. Let's say we want to go a bit further and go into brand and specifics as well. So we can do that as well. And the same sort of logic, just like here, we use the unique function to get the unique values from our filtered list. And we're going to do the same thing here. So in this case, we're going to do filter again, and we're pulling this time from column C and our condition this time is going to be based on the values in column B and that they equal this value. Now I've got nothing selected right now, so it's not gonna pull anything. So let's say I'm gonna select bread. So we've got all those different types. And in this case, I don't have any repeating values, but just to be safe, I'm gonna use the unique function to make sure that if in a different selection, um, there are duplicates, that unique function will, will strip them out. So now let's go back again and go back to electronics. So the one thing you'll notice is when I've made a, made a change here and this selection is now wrong, it doesn't, it doesn't clear out, it just says that it's invalid. So that I go back into here, bread's not an option. So let's say I go back to select smartphones. 
now it's okay. And now I'm gonna create another named range. So this one is going to be selection three. And so let's go again, insert another dropdown from range and equal to selection three. Done. And now I've got my different smart smartphone brands that I want to select from. So if instead of smartphones, let's say I select laptops, see that list updates. And so does this one. So Apple happened to be an option for both. So it didn't, it didn't give me that error message. Otherwise it would have, if I select Lenovo and let's say I switch to headphones, right? It's not in that category. So that gives me that error. So that's why, that's why I didn't see it for Apple. It happened to be in both categories. But as you can see, that's the main thing you'll see is if you make those changes, you'll, you'll get that warning message saying, hey, this is an invalid selection, but it won't actually automatically clear it off for you. But this is how you can create um, dependent dropdowns. Now, the one, one thing that may cause, uh, ca cause a bit of an issue here is let's say if you wanted to create multiple series of dropdowns, like I couldn't just do this and say, okay, I'm done. Because the problem is, um, while this, these drop downs are fine, the electronics, the first selection, that's fine. The problem is going to come in with these these options here, because these ones are still going to be linking back to this first to this second selection, right? There, the the named range here is linked to selection two. So if if you wanted to have multiple rows of selections or, or a lot a, a large selection, then you would have to create create more more columns, right? So let's say, um, for now, I'm not gonna go with row of three, but let's say I want a second row here of, of selections. So I wanna have multiple inputs. So I'm gonna insert a couple extra columns here. Let's just get rid of these drop downs that I'm not using here. So I've got, let's say person one makes these selections and then person two selects these ones. So the first drop down again, these are not dependent drop downs, so these ones are fine. It doesn't doesn't matter. Um, the ones that I'm going to need to create separate lists for are these two right here, because right now this is selection two. So I need another one for selection two. So I can copy this formula over and say, okay, for this one, I'm going to make sure that you know we're still looking at column B, still looking at column A, but now I'm looking at row nine. So I'm basing it on this selection because there's the potential that obviously I might have a different option here. So I want to change that. So instead of calling this selection two, which I can't anymore, let's say selection two B, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever variation, right? So now let's modify this and selection two B done just this instance. So we don't want to change all of them. We don't want them to think that we're changing all of them. And so now we've got our separate list. So in selection one, we've got, these are our, our different categories. We've got headphones and jeans in this one that we can select. So you can see they correspond to the same one. And so a similar step we'd have to make for another list here for that third product category or the third category for brands. Again, referencing row nine based on those selections. And let's call this selection 3b so as you can see this can be a bit cumbersome if you're if, if you're planning to create a, a large um, group of options here just this instance you just want to make sure you don't override the other drop downs otherwise you could undo that process so it is possible if you wanted to create a list it's still it's still going to take a little bit of initial work to set it up but this is a lot easier than you might be used to setting up uh, dependent dropdowns in Excel where let's say you, you're going to have to create separate dropdown lists and use the indirect function for every possible combination. So for example, if someone selects smartphones, you're going to have to have a list of all the smartphone brands. If you select laptops, all the laptop brands, all the tablets, then all the tablet brands and so on. So you can imagine all the different dropdowns you would have or the different columns you'd have to have. And then you know, the nightmare that would be if you'd have to go in and maintain that and change it and find the right column with, with Google Sheets and this type of setup, I think this is a bit easier to maintain because you can just make the changes here. You've got those filter options, making it 
easy to to do this now with excel potentially you could use the the filter option there as well but compared to the, the the previous way of doing it where you'd have multiple lists and having to maintain it that way this is a bit of an easier option the worst thing that you have to do here is have multiple named ranges if you wanted to create uh, a large series of selections but if you're looking at just you know uh one one round of selections where a person selects electronics say that headphones then a brand then this is not too bad because the filter function does a really good job uh, combined with the unique function of filtering out just exactly what you need for that selection so the key thing to remember um, when you're creating dependent drop downs in google sheets is obviously have them organized right so you've got your category product your brands that initial drop down which is just going to be a simple list of your your first category and then your dependent drop downs you're going to want to use the filter function to say okay look at this category base it on the selections in this category which are a match to this this selection and that'll help you create that named range that you could then use in here so we're going to create a named range for for that filtered list and that is used in this drop down option and the same process for this when we're using the drop down or the or the list is coming from a named range which relates to in this case selection three and that's based again on that filter function. So using that, using that filter function can make it a whole lot easier to, to create these dependent dropdowns. Again, the one drawback is if potentially you, you wanna create a whole list of, of dependent dropdowns, that's when it can get a little bit messy. My suggestion in that case would be to use a separate tab um, or, or, or put these off into a, a separate area of your worksheet where, the, where they're not, um, uh, where they're not visible and so it's easier to, to reference that information without having to you know obstruct your spreadsheet or obstruct your view right so you can just put it out of sight potentially um, hiding these columns and then you know we still have these selections we can still have the drop downs work and you know then you've got a, a much cleaner a much cleaner sort of layout so um, so that's how you can create dependent dropdowns in Google Sheets. Um, not not too bad, but it's just the one wrinkle is if you have to create a, a, a lot of them. So if you like this video, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.